Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chioma. If you are new, thanks for stopping by. Please do it to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. And to all my old subscribers, thank you for always coming back. God bless you. Alright, so today we are going to be talking about behavioral red flags in children. Parents should not ignore part two. Behavioral red flags in children, parents should not ignore. Part two. Number one, quickly, I wouldn't want to waste our time. Number one, excessive desire for something or anything. Excessive desire for something or anything. You know, we have children who, who like sweet mouth. They are sweet, they have sweet tooth. And sometimes, or most of the time, parents ignore it and it's wrong. If your child is always desiring sweet, mommy, I want sweet, mommy, I want sweet. There, there should be a time your child will say, mommy, I want sweet, and you say, no, no sweet for you today. Or no sweet for you this week. Don't always give it to them. They always want it. So you are always giving them. Sometimes they may, they may not even have need for that thing, but it's just that it has become a part of them to always ask for it. Some children just love to ask. It has become a part of them to always make requests, whether they need it or they don't need it, they just request for it. Sometimes you see that when you give them, they give to other children. So it's not because they want it. It's just because they want to ask. They have something to, to always ask for. Some children will just tell you, I want to eat pizza. It's not like they are hungry. It's not like they really want it. But they, want, they just want to make a request. And they expect the request to be granted. So excessive desire for something or for anything, whatever it is, if the request or the desire for that particular thing is increasing, is becoming daily, is becoming regular. No, correct them and stop it. In fact, you can you can say, okay, you're not going to have such a thing the whole of this month. We will we'll, we'll make an alternative, you know, something to replace it with for a while. So we're not going to give you this anymore. We're not going to give you this for this month or for such a period of time. Don't always, when they ask for it sometimes, Parents should learn to say no when it's necessary. Parents should learn to say no when it is necessary. It's, it's important. It's important to send your child no sometimes. So everything is not yes. So much yes, 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 yes. When they now go outside and somebody tells them no, the person has done them evil. Okay? Number two, constant moodiness or state of unhappiness. When you realize that your child, who used to be happy, suddenly becomes moody or is not always happy, there is a reason for that. Sometimes I have discovered that children whose parents or whose mother gave birth to a new baby, they are not always happy. So parents don't take note of this, but it's important to take note of it now as you're hearing it from me. They become moody. Sometimes they, they are withdrawn. That's because they feel all the attention is being given to this new baby. They feel they are no more relevant. Their time has passed. So is this new baby now that mommy and daddy is taking care of? Everything. You know, children, are, you will buy a diaper. And then they ask, Mommy, what is this? Say, it's diaper, it's for the new baby. You will buy milk. Mommy, what is this? It's milk, it's for the new baby. You will buy Mommy, what is this? It's clothes for the new baby, you know? So sometimes they just start to wonder, like, why is everything for the new baby? That's not the only reason why a child can be withdrawn or unhappy. I know we talk about abuse, sexual abuse or assault. We are always talking about it. But let us also talk about neglect. Let's also talk about child neglect. Children can feel neglected and they withdraw themselves. You know, sometimes they are just on their own. Quiet. Nothing interests them anymore. Maybe it's because their parents are always shouting at them. They do something mommy or daddy would always shout at them. And then sometimes they feel the need. So instead of expressing themselves and be shouted at, they rather stay at a side, at one corner, stay all by themselves. You know, sometimes it can be that, you know, they, they are always beating for a, a little misunderstanding between them and the younger ones. You know, there are some families where if the younger one just cries more, the older one must be beaten or punished. And of course, you know, last ones and how tricky they can be. You, you can just tell the last one, be careful, oh. and then the next thing, the last one, the, the child starts shouting, mommy, 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 you know, and then the next thing, mommy just comes in, what, why are you beating me, what, the, ah! Without even asking if you really beat this child. 
So sometimes they feel less important or they feel irrelevant in the house. Because last one will always go to complain to mommy. Look at what he did to me or look at what she did to me. And mommy, will, or mom, mommy or daddy will always come to beat them up for something they didn't even do. Or sometimes maybe they did it, you know, but they were angry. And they did it out of anger. And then you just beat them. No. Sometimes you call them. Talk to them. Ask them what really happened. Hear them. Let them explain to you what happened. Hear their own side of the story. Before, you know, you take actions or you make your your decisions. These are some of the things that can make a child moody or unhappy. When the child feels neglected, feels irrelevant, feels unimportant, or feels some of his or her siblings are well taken care of more than himself or more than herself. Or feels there's a new baby in the house. Everybody's running health and scatter to make sure this new baby is happy. This new baby is taken care of and nobody's even bothering about me. So these are some of the things that can make them moody or unhappy. So sometimes when you notice your children are like that, see, I'm always talking about calling your children attention and talking to them. If your child is three, four, five, six, upwards, there is always a need for conversation. As a parent, there is always a need for conversation. So you call your child, you talk with your child, let them tell you what is making them angry. Sometimes they may not want to open up immediately, that's one thing about children, okay? They still feel if they talk, you're going to beat them. Or you're going to punish them. So you must reach an agreement with them and promise them you're not going to beat them or shout at them. You know, when they voice out and tell you what the matter is. There must be an agreement first. And that is an assurance that, okay, mommy says she's not going to shout at me if I tell her. So let me tell her. Of course, you're a mother, you're a father, you're a parent. Look for possible ways to get your child or your children to talk to you confidentially. You know, there are always, you know, means to get them to talk when you want them to talk. Or not listen to that wouldn't talk with them, not say anything to just what happened? No. What's up with you? No. But deep down there is something. Even if it means you taking them out, give them a treat, buy them things. And as they're eating ice cream and hamburger and donuts and meat pie, and then you now call their attention. You know mommy loves you. You know daddy loves you. I love you. I'll protect you. I'll fight for you. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. Now tell me, what is the reason why you are being moody or unhappy or things like that? And you'll be shocked. They'll open up. They'll open up to you. Then, if your child is unnecessarily startled or afraid, you'll buy a really little thing. You just discover that the child just sucks and ah, you know when something somebody opens the door or somebody closes the door or somebody calls their name, they are necessarily afraid or they startle. It's a red flag. It's a red flag. It is a red flag. Don't say I noticed it though and me yeah, I just feel they they will get over it. No, help them get over it as fast as possible. Call them, ask them. I've noticed that you always startle. When something happens or when somebody calls you or you're always afraid or you act as if somebody is pushing you. What is the matter? Talk to mommy. Make sure you assure them that you are going to be your dragon slayer. <laughs> you know, children, they love reassurance from their parents a lot. Take your time to study your children. Know who they are. Know how to approach them. Know how to get the truth from their mouth. You know, always promise them that, okay, when you tell mommy this, if, if somebody beats you, tell me, I am going to beat the person black and blue. You may not go to beat the person in the real sense. You know, in reality, you may not go to fight, but tell them, if somebody offends you, I am going to talk to that person now. I am going to caution that person now. I am going to scold that person now. That way, they can open up and tell you what the matter is. But please, study your children. Know how to get the truth from their mouth. Know how to teach them and make them talk. Even if they don't feel like talking, there are some things you will do that will make them talk. Now, if your child brings home what does not belong to him or her, it's a red flag. Don't overlook it. Don't say they will have see. There are some things some children don't outgrow. You are the one as a parent that will help them to outgrow it. Don't sit down and, and when they get to ten years, they will outgrow it. No. If your child brings them something that does not belong to them, make it a habit to always take their school bags. School bag and lunch bag. Me, I check every day. The moment you enter my house. First thing first, with your school uniform on your body, I will unzip your bag. And I will check. Before I will say, I remove school uniform, remove shoe, remove socks. So when I check, and, I, and if you check and you see something that does not belong to them, ask them, how did this enter your bag? Who put it inside? Who gave it to you? 
they should be able to tell you. And if they are not telling you what you want to hear, or you are not convinced with what they are telling you, or your child, you know, is saying something you don't understand, pick up your phone and call the teacher. This is what I said my child's back. Who puts it? Or this is what my child is telling me. Who puts it? Now, if the teacher is not, if the teacher is not aware, it means the next day when you get to school, you are going to go to his class. Approach the teacher. Show the teacher what to send your child's back. If it belongs to another child, they will take it. If it is a school that gave it to him as a prize or something, they will tell you. And then you go back home. Have a conversation with your child. And then tell your child that it is wrong to take things that does not belong to them. Okay? So, number one is... Um, Number one, excessive desire for something or for anything. Number two, constant moodiness or state of unhappiness. And number three, if your child is unnecessarily afraid or startles over anything. Number four, number four, if your child brings home what does not belong to them, it's a red flag. Don't overlook it. And God will give us the grace to train up our children in the way they should go. And when they grow old, they will not go the wrong direction in the name of Jesus. Strength to take care of our children the right way. Strength to teach our children what is right and what is wrong. Strength to bring up our children in the way of the Lord is released unto each and every one parent in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I have prayed. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Please, if you have not subscribed, don't wait anymore. Click on the subscribe um, button. And then on the bell notification to get notified every time I upload a new video. Do well to give this video a thumbs up and share to your family and friends. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.